Welcome to Lingua Latina Tutorials with Mr. K. Pensum D. This video explains the new grammar and syntax found in Chapter 45 of the Lingua Latina series. This video is meant to accompany the Latina Disco text available from Focus Bookstore and the Pensum D worksheets available from 50%latin.blogspot.com or christianlanguage.com. Let's get into the text and look at our new features. Starting with line 8. We'll start here with uh, Custodibus. Custodibus armatis corpus saepsit, neque en adius regni, quicquam praeter vim habebat, ut qui neque populi iusu, neque autoribus patribus regnaret. So after he, um, with a uh, with armed guards, he surrounded the body, for he did not have uh, anything, or for there was not, uh, there was not any right for his ruling, or there, he wasn't ruling justly. There wasn't any right for his ruling. Um, he had no right for his ruling except for force, so that uh, he um, neither was ruling by the will of the people, nor with the senators as his supporters. Uh, and so you see here also that utqui can mean uh, cum. So uh, he was, he didn't have any right uh, except for force for his rule, uh, uh, since he was neither ruling by the will of the people, nor by the uh, senators, or with the senators as his supporters. So the new feature uh, here, you've seen um, ablet of absolutes many times before. Here we have an ablet of absolute, where we it, there is no uh, participle, there's no verb with it. With um, you're still going to translate it as uh, the attendant circumstances. So while this is a true, so and he does he wasn't ruling. Um, while the senators were supporting him, or with the support of the senators, uh, these ablatives, the um, are, we have a, you can have a ablative absolute just with a noun, as you have here with octoribus. <clears throat> the next new feature is in line sixteen, and here we'll start with fifteen. Hicenem regum primus traditum a prioribus morem de omnibus rebus senatum consolendi solvit domesticis consel consiliis rem publicam administravit bellum pacem foedora societates per se ipse cum quibus voluit in iussu populi et ac senatus fec trupitque. Ah, so for um. For this guy uh, carried out his uh, reign, or the first, sorry, first of all the kings. For this guy, first of all the kings uh, got rid of, or loosened, dissolved uh, the tradition handed down from his ancestors, uh, the tradition of consulting the Senate about all things. Uh, he administrate, or he administered the state with his own private plans or his plans from his own house and he uh, he fake it, we gotta go to a verb at the end, he made and broke both war and peace, treaties, alliances uh, all by himself uh, with, with whom he wanted to, with whomever he wanted by the, uh, with the um, with a lack of support, or without the people or the Senate commanding it, or with, without the support of the people and the Senate. So the new feature here we have is, uh, we have consulendi, and you saw that I translated as um, of consulting, the habit, um, he dissolved the habit of consulting the Senate, consulendi senatum. Notice that we have a gerund here, with an object, and I, we've learned before that most of the time the Romans didn't do this. Most of the time, instead of using a gerund, which is an active uh, verbal noun, 
of uh, here is the genitive, and only has the genitive, dative, uh, accusative, and ablative forms. But here we have um, we do have an object within the Senate of consulting the Senate. If we wanted to change this to the way they would normally do this, the Romans would normally have senatus in the genitive with consulendi. So uh, the habit uh, senatus, the genitive consulendi, of consulting the Senate or of the Senate needing to be consulted. The next new feature is in line 59. Head to 59. And here we will start with, um, yeah, we will start up here with Ea. Ea comuna nocte perfecta essent, Tarquinius Paolo ante lucem acquitis, ad se principus latinorum moram suam hesternam velut divinitus ait. Saluti se biatque elis fuisse. I'll start. We'll stop there. Uh, when um, when those things had been finished in one night, Tarquinius, a little bit before dawn, with all the chieftains of the Latins, uh, after they had been summoned to himself, he said that his uh, his delay uh, on the previous day, Hesternum. Uh, was uh, or had been, as it were, uh, a divine blessing uh, for the well-being for himself and for them. Uh, here we have saluti, a dative case. Uh, it was so his his delay was for the health for himself. Here we have the dative of purpose and a dative of reference, the double dative, for this, for this was for the well-being for himself and for them. The next new feature is in line 67, and here we'll start with ubi. Ubi et oventum est, turn exon excitatum, etc. So, literally, when there was an arrival there, they, uh, they encircled Turnus uh, after he had been woken from his sleep. So, ventum est, third person singular, perfect passive, indicative verb, but here there's no clear subject. It's used in an impersonal way. When era, to come, can't have an object. So in the passive, there was an arrival by them. We would say, uh, when they arrived there, but understand that went to mass to here is being used impersonally. So you have to add there in front of it. There, there was an arrival, or we change the subject to, they arrived, when they arrived. The next new feature is in line 80. So let's move ahead. Okay, so we have uh, haud difficultir persuasit latinis quam quam in et o foedera superiors romana res erat. So uh, not at all, uh, with, uh, with, with very little difficulty he persuaded the Latins although uh, the Roman state was uh, superior in that treaty, or was greater in that treaty. Uh, how de difficulter, difficulter is the adverb form for diffic difficulis, diffic difficulis, difficult, the adjective, difficulter with difficulty, or um, difficultly, which we, we don't say. But with difficulty, he, um, with very little, how de difficulty, with very little difficulty, he persuaded the Latins. Remember that persuasit takes the dative. That's why you have latinis here. The next feature is in line 94. And so here we have uh, ubicum, ubicum vendenda praeda quadragenta talenta argenti fecisset eam pecuniam omnem aed edificandum iovis templum servavit. Okay, so um, when he had made 40 talents of silver by selling the loot or the booty that he had gained, he saved that money, all of that money, for the building of a temple 
or the temple of Jove, or Jupiter's temple. So here, um, Wendenda is a gerundive. You can see that it is um, acting like an adjective with prida. So it's by um, by selling the by selling the loot that he gained in that war, by selling his booty. And um, remember the form of Wendenda from, from Wendera. This is the future passive participle in form, but it's called a gerundive when it is used as an adjective like this. And uh, the, um, it is going to be an a it's ablative singular feminine future passive participle. If we were going to change this to the gerund form that we've seen a couple times in this chapter, um, by selling the, we could use prida as an object of windenda, we'd have windenda pridam, pridam accusative, by selling the uh, loot. In line 100, we have another new feature. So, nam cum velut posito bello fundamentis templi acendis ale is urbanis operibus intentum se esset simularet sextus filius eius qui minimus ex tribus erat transfugit ex composito gabios patris in se sae vitiam non tolerandam quereens I think we'll stop there, that's a long one uh, for when um, just as if he was uh, setting aside the war, just as if with the war set aside, when um, he was pretending uh, that he was um, intent upon laying down the foundations of the temple and was intent upon other uh, works in the city, Sextus, his son who was, uh, his son who was youngest from his um, kids or his tribe, uh, his son crossed over, according to a plan, crossed over to Gabii, uh, complaining that he could not, or complaining that the uh, cruelty of his father against himself could not be tolerated, non tolerandum. The new feature here in this long section is uh, with Yakendis, and it is a dative case, uh, going with uh, fundamentis, and it's intentum that takes this dative. Intent upon, intentus, you see in the margin, takes the dative. Intent upon yakendis fundamentis, on laying down the foundations. Notice also that we have a gerundive here, yakendis, yakiendis, with fundamentis, so it's acting like an adjective with fundamentis. And um, if we were going to uh, change this around... Um, with a, a gerund and an object, we'd have yakendis fundamenta, laying down the foundations for this neuter noun fundamentum. The next new feature is in line 114. And here we will start uh, with, um, we're gonna, we need expectando, so going all the way up, uh, don't see expectando in this sentence. I think we're probably in the we're in the wrong sentence here. So I'm going to move ahead to line one eighteen. And in one eighteen, I will start up here with um, start with Filius. No, non miran non mirantur si. Non mirantur si tarquinius qualis in quiwis, qualis in socios, talis ad ultimum in liberos eset. Sibi vero gratum ad ventum eius esse aiunt, nam illo ad adjuante brevi futurum ut aportis gabinis sub romana moenia bellum transferatur. So we have here, um, this is the people of Gabii. The people of Gabii aren't surprised if Tarquin, being such a way toward his own citizens, being such a way toward his allies, be just that same way uh, toward, in, in the end of, ultimately, be that same way in Liberos, toward his children. And here's them speaking. They say, uh, 
that um, that his arrival was um, very um, his arrival was gratum, very welcome to themselves for Ilo Aduante with him helping him them. In a little while, they were saying that it would be it would be the case that the bellum that the war would be carried over from the gates of uh, Gabii um, to the walls of Rome, or it would be carried beneath, be brought beneath the walls of Rome. So here, the, the new feature, actually two new features here, one is adiuante, adiuante being the present active participle, going with illo, with that guy helping them. This is the ablative absolute, and so we have the ablative singular masculine with illo because it's talking about it's talking about sextus helping them out with that guy helping them. And then the next new feature is you see that futurum, futurum essay, this is all indirect speech. They say that um, that it will be uh, in a little while, it will be the case. Futurum essay. So um, this is just our futurum essay, our future active participle from sum, sum esse. And then we also have a subjunctive here, transferatur, a present passive subjunctive, and the, um, from transfere, to uh, carry across or over. Why do we have a subjunctive? Well, we're in an ut clause. What kind of an ut clause? Well, this is an ut noun clause, and it's an ut noun clause acting as the subject of futurum esse. So, uh, for they say that um, that this thing, that the war is going to be carried over, that that will be happening, that that's going to be what's going to be. That's going to be what's going to be. Futurum esse. Remember that futurum esse is often replaced by fore, that it will be. And why is, this is kind of an awkward construction, but it's a way of getting around using the future passive infinitive, which the Romans didn't like very much. Remember, the future passive infinitive is the supine plus iri, as you see in the margin here, trans latum iri. Remember the principal parts, transfere, to carry across, trans tuli, I, uh, trans tuli say, to have carried across, and trans latum esse, to have, uh, to have been carried across. Here, trans latum iri, the supine plus iri, is how you say... Um, the future passive, that the war will be carried across. But the way the Romans preferred to say it here, we could say, um, futurum essay, they say that it will be that the war be carried across. The next new feature is in line 128. And here we have, we'll start with uh, Ita. Ita cum sensum ad rebelle, rebellandum primoris gabinorum incitare et ipse cum promptissimus, promptissimis juvenum praedatum iret, dictis factisque omnibus ad falendum aptis ad ultimum dux belli legetur. So thus, when little by little, uh, or after little by little, he was urging on the the first citizens of the of Gabii was urging them on to rebellion, and he himself, with the most eager of the young men, was going out <coughs> to um, to get uh, loot or to to loot the Romans. Uh, with uh, after after his words, after all of his words and deeds, just right optis for deceiving the, the Gabii, the people of Gabii. After that, he is chosen, at, at last, he is chosen as the leader of the war. So here, the new uh, feature is uh, the use of praedatum here. Remember that praedatum, when you have a verb of motion, and then this, this form, uh, the third principal part, looks like a perfect passive participle ending in um, this is our supine the first supine, he was going out to get booty, praedatum. It shows purpose. Uh, what is a supine? Remember that it's a, a fourth de defective fourth declension neuter 
noun that only has its accusative and ablative form. So it only has um and u as a, as a form. The next new feature is in line 130. And here we have uh, ibicum in scia multitudine quid agretur proelia parva inter Romam gabiosque fierent quibus plerumque gabina res superior eset tum universi gabini <coughs> sextum tactar quinium divini tu sibi misum ducum credorat. Uh, so there, when um, when uh, while uh, while the while the majority didn't know what was going on, literally with the majority not knowing what was going on, uh, there some small battles parva proelia were being conducted between Rome and Gabii, in which, <coughs> excuse me, for the most part, uh, the state of Gabii or the <coughs> the city of Gabii was greater. Uh, both, um, both because of that, then, um, and then, the whole people of Gabii, uh, then the whole people of Gabii believed that Sextus Tarquinius uh, had been divinely sent to them as a leader, Duke. So the new feature here in this section is inskia, inskia uh, with. Um, with multitudine. And so here we have another example of an ablative absolute with a, in a, a noun form. We have an adjective with a noun with the multitude not knowing. Remember that the ablative absolute just shows the attendant circumstances. So while this is true, while the multitude doesn't know what is going on, uh, there some battles were, going, were happening. And what, the, what didn't they know? They didn't know that uh, Sextus was playing them this whole time, that he was tricking them into believing that he was trustworthy and that he was going to help them, lead them to victory over Rome. The next new feature is in line 140. So here uh, we have, Huic nuntio quia credo dubiae fide, fidei videbatur nihil voce responsum est. So, to this messenger, Huic Nuntio, uh, there no response was made with his voice, or he said nothing. Literally, nothing was responded with the voice. Why? Quia, because I believe, this is a parenthetical statement by Libby, because I believe that he seemed to be of a doubtful trustworthiness. Or we would tr probably translate this as, because I believe he seemed to be untrustworthy. But literally here we have a genitive case of fidei, from fides, of a, of a doubtful faithfulness is the genitive of description here. So uh, fidei is genitive singular feminine from fides. In line 142, we have, well, we'll start with... Uh, Start with Rex Velu. Rex Velu deliberans in hortum idium transit sequente nutio filii. So the king, as if he were uh, mulling things over or considering things, went crossed over into the garden of his house with the messenger of his son following him. Here we have a an ablative absolute sequente nuntio with the messenger following him. Sequente, remember, comes from sequor, sequi. This is a, a deponent verb. But deponent verbs, in, when they become a participle, the present, they have a, a, an active form, as you have here, with the messenger of the sun following him. They actually do have, um, they do have the present active endings. And here it's unte, the ablative. The next new feature is in line 166, and here, go up a little bit, okay, so here we have, uh, we'll start with, um, 
This is a long section, but we'll start with qui. Qui labor cum militiae adoretur, minus tamen plebs indignabatur, se templa de orum edificara manibus suis, quam postquam ad alia opera specie minora, sed laboris aliquanto maioris traducer, traducebatur, velut ad foros in circo ad paciendos cloa, cloa camque maximam subterra agendam. So and um, so and this labor and this work was being added, or when this work was being added to the army to the soldiers. Uh, still, the plebs were less indignant uh, that they were building um, temples of the gods with their hands. They were less indignant about that than uh, they were afterwards when they were building uh, minora opera works that were lesser in um, significance uh, to the others, but um, but were by some degree, uh, but were being um, brought out uh, by some degree of a greater labor. So they were harder. It was harder work to do these lesser works that weren't as impressive or as respectable, like, and here are the works that it's describing, like, uh, making um, like making the uh, seats in the Circus Maximus and like making the uh, Cloaca Maxima that was going underground so digging out the Cloaca Maxima, the sewer. So the new feature here in 166 is Faciendos and Faciendos is uh, with odd shows purpose to make the uh, seats in the circus, and to uh, to make the cloaca underground. This is the gerundive with foros. Remember, you know it's gerundive because it is uh, it matches the ending os. If we were going to try to change this to a gerund, we would have um, ad ad foros faciendum because the gerund only has its singular forms, but the, they did, the Romans did not use odd plus the gerund and an object. So it would always be changed into this gerundive form, so you would not ever get um, odd foros faciendum. Instead, you'll always get odd foros faciendos to make the um, seats in the, forum, in the circus. The next new feature is in line 185. And here we have, uh, starting with quo, quo postquam ventum est perfectis patres mandatis, cupido in que sit animos juvenum scisquitandi adquem eorum regnum romanum esset venturum. Okay, so here we have another impersonal use of venera to come. After there was an arrival there, literally, <clears throat> after there was an arrival there, or after they arrived there, is how we'd say that, uh, with the uh, commands of their father having been finished, or again, after they finished their father's orders, or what their father had commanded, this is our ablative absolute, uh, desire of asking, uh, of the desire of the desire of asking uh, this question filled the spirits of the young men, or sp filled the minds of the young men. The desire of asking to which of them would the Rome was the Roman kingdom going to come. So the new feature here is um, we have the cupido skiskitandi, the desire of asking. Here we have an example of a gerund, skiskitandi, acting as a partitive genitive of cupido, the desire of asking. The desire of asking filled the spirits of the young men. Remember that the gerunds have an active sense, right? The desire of asking this question. So the question acts like, kind of like an object here. The next new feature is in line 190. 
And here we have Tarquin i ut sextus qui Romae relictus fuerat, ignarus responsi ex persque imperii eset rem summa opetaceri jubent. So the Tarquin brothers, or the Tarquins, uh, and we have to go, our main verb is here, they, they order that the matter be kept silent with all of their effort. So they're really going to try to keep this silent. Why? Ut sextus. So that sextus, who had been left behind in Rome, might be, might be ignorant of the response of the oracle and be kept out of uh, ruling or kept out of his imperium or be literally be lacking of his imperium. Here we have two genitives, responsi and imperii, and these two genitives are with um, special, special adjectives. These special adjectives are, um, I call them pi pi, pi pi adjectives. The pi pi adjectives are peritus, skillful, inscius, not knowing, prudens, clever, with something, Ignarus, not knowing, and experts, la experts, lacking or not having a part of something. So, not knowing the response, ignorant of the response, here's our genitive with a pi pi, and lacking power, or not having any part in ruling or in the empire, experts uh, is one of the pi pi's plus imperii. The next new feature is 190, in line 197. <clears throat> and here we have uh, reditum, reditum in de Romam ubi adversus rutulos bellum summa vi parabatur. Literally, there was a returning thence from there to Rome. But we would say they returned to Rome, but notice that reditum est, est is missing here, but it's implied, reditum est means um, uh, redierut, they returned, but it's um, impersonal and passive. They returned from there to Rome where uh, war against the Rutuli was being prepared for with uh, all of the with all their strength. The next new feature is in line 226 and here we have we'll start with Ibi Sextum Tarquinium Mala libido lucretiae per vim stuprandae capit. There, a, a, a terrible desire of raping Lucretia seized, uh, grabbed hold of Sextus, Sextus Tarquinius. So here the, the new feature is um, lucretiae stuprandae. Notice that we have a, ger, a gerundive here. Of, uh, of raping Lucretia, if we, if we had put this into a gerund form, we'd have stu, stuprandi lucretiam, of raping Lucretia. Stuprandi here, because remember the gerund only has neuter forms. So it only has in the genitive only the long I, stuprandi. And then lucretiam would be its object. Stuprandi lucretiae, a uh, lucretiam. But instead, uh, we have the desire of raping Lucretia, Lucretiae stuprandae. And notice here also that this is acting as an objective genitive with libido, desire of doing this. The next new feature is in line 251. Going to 251, where we have, uh, we'll start with, uh, this is a long section, and we'll just start with Lucretia. Lucretia maesta tanto malo nuntium Romam eundem ad patrem ardeamque ad virum mitit, utcum singulis fidelibus amicis veniant, itta facto maturatoque, Opus esse, rem atrocem incidisse. So Lucretia, in grief, uh, she sent a messenger 
with the terrible news, she sent a messenger, the same messenger, Eundem Nuntium, to Rome, to her father, and she sent the same messenger to Ardea, to her husband, and the message was that, with a few faithful friends, they, that they come with a few faithful friends, that thus there was a need for action and for speed, uh, that a horrible rema trokem, a horrible thing, had happened. Uh, here we have opus esse in this indirect statement, which is why we have the infinitive here, esse, that there was a need, opus esse, opus esse takes the ablative, which is why we have facto and matoroque, these are the ablatives from uh, the third principal part, the um, perfect passive participles uh, from uh, facara and from maturare, to hurry along and to do. Uh, but we'll translate these as uh, there was a need of action, something needed to be done, and of speed, of something needed to be hurried along. The next new feature is in line 266. And here we have um, Consolantur aegram animia vertendo noxam ab coacta in autorem delicti. So they console the woman sick in her spirit or sick in her heart. They console her by turning away the blame from her who was forced, turning the blame onto the author of the evil deed. Namely, they're trying to make her feel, okay, because it wasn't her fault. She didn't do anything wrong. She was forced. So here the new feature is an avertendo. They console the girl sick of spirit by means of turning away the blame. Avertendo here is a gerund. And awertendo, um, and the object is of it is noxam. If we were going to change this to a gerundiv, they console her spirit by turning away the blame. We would have uh, awertenda noxa by the blame being turned away, or about to be turned away. In line two seventy five. 75, we have uh, Brutus illis luctu occupatis, cultum ex vulnera lucretia extracta manentem crore praesae tenens, per hunc inquit castissimum ante regiam injuriam sanguinem juro, uh, etc. So Brutus, uh, while those guys are occupied with grie grieving, literally with those guys occupied with grief, he, uh, the, um, he holding the knife, having been pulled out of, the, of Lucretia's wound, the knife dripping with gore, holding that in front of himself, he said, by this most chaste blood in front of this uh, princess's injury, I swear... And you gods, I make my witnesses that I am going to do all this stuff. I'm going to drive out. I'm going to pursue, and I'm going to pursue Lucius Tarquinius Superbus with his evil wife, etc. Uh, the new feature here is um, the uh, occupatis, the use of occupatis, another ablative absolute. With those guys, uh, or while, while those guys are occupied with grieving or being uh, with their mourning, this is ablative plural masculine. With Ilis talking about the the other two men there with Brutus. The next new feature is in line two ninety three. And we will start here with Moet. Moet cum patris maestitia, tum brutus castigator lacrimarum, atque inertium quae relarum autorque, quod viros, quod romanos deceret, 
arma capiendi adversus hostilia ausos. So we have that grief, uh, when the grief of the father, actually we have a bukum kum, both and, both the grief of the father and then Brutus as the chastiser of their tears uh, and of their empty complaints and the author of seizing arms, uh, seizing arms, which is befitting, which was befitting men, which was befitting Romans, uh, that his him Brutus moves them uh, against adversus against those who dared uh, those um, evil or hostile deeds. The new feature <clears throat> here in this section is uh, the use of capiendi. So we have that Brutus is the auctor capiendi arma, the author of seizing weapons, or the we we'll call him the uh, supporter or the instigator, the instigator of seizing weapons or of taking up arms. The the uh, use of capiendi here is it's a gerund form with the neuter object, neuter accusative object arma of seizing weapons. If we were going to uh, change this into a gerundive from the um, present active genitive neuter singular word here, capiendi, we would have armorum capiendorum of, of weapons being seized. The next new feature is in line 298. Here we have, um, I think we'll see, yeah, we can start here. We have uh, Duque, Ceteri Armati, Duque Bruto, Roman Profecti. The other armed men set out to Rome, Duque Bruto, with Brutus as their leader. Another example of a, an ablative absolute uh, with uh, only using nouns, Duque Bruto. Duque from Dukes the ablative singular here, with Brutus leading them. <coughs> In line 306, <coughs> we have, Ebi oratio habita nequaquam eius pectoris ingenique, quod simulatum aream diem puerat, de ui ac libidine sex, <coughs> sex tarquinii, <clears throat> Etc. We'll stop there for a second. <clears throat> so there, a speech was held in no way, <clears throat> in no way of that, uh, of that same, of that heart and of that nature, which, <clears throat> which he had been pretending up until that day. A speech about the, the, um, use of force and the sexual perversion of Sextus Tarquinius about the disgusting rape of Lucretia and about her uh, wretched death, uh, about the bereavement of Trichipitinus, Trichipitinus, Trichipitinus. Uh, so that, I'll stop there. Uh, we'll end the, because the new feature in this section is um, Eus pectoris and ingenieque. So not at all a speech not at all of of his uh, na of his uh, of that mind or of that mind and of that nature which he had been pretending before. So here we have a couple of genitives which are genitives of description, which you um, which we saw a little bit earlier, uh, and we also saw it in the previous chapter. So both uh, pecto pectoris and ingenii are genitives of that sort, genitives of description describing describing Brutus because he's he's acting way out of his normal nature because he normally acted like he uh, well that he was mentally challenged and now suddenly he's speaking eloquently and with great force and leadership and so they're shocked. People are shocked. In line three twenty five We gotta go down to so. We'll start here with inter hunc tumultum tulia domo profugit. 
in the midst of this uh, tumult or this in the middle of this riot, Tulia ran out of her house, ran away from home uh, with um, with men and women uh, cursing her wherever she was going, and with the uh, men and women calling upon the uh, avenging furies, the furies, the Avengers, parentum of parents. So here we have execrantibus, uh, ablative plural masculine, going together with viris mulieribus, mulier, mulieribusque, with men and women cursing. Uh, when you have both men and women plural, then you use the masculine form of the, um, here we have the, par the participle. So why is this, uh, why, why do we have ablative, an ablative form for execrantibus? It's in an, an ablative absolute, again. So with the men and women cursing her uh, wherever, she go, she, wherever she went. And then you see the also ablative absolute with invocantibus and with them uh, invoking or calling on the Furies. The next new feature is in 334. Here we have a duo patrem secuti sunt, qui exulatum caere in etruscos ierunt. So the two sons, the two sons followed their father, and they went into the land of the Etruscans, or into Etruria, to uh, be exiles in Cairo, this a city in Etruria. So the new feature here is exulatum. This is our supine from exulara. To exulara means to be in exile. So here with the verb of motion, ierunt, they went, and this shows purpose. They went, they got the motion, to be, in, to be exiles, exulatum. Uh, they went to be exiles in Cairo. The next <clears throat> new feature is in line 350. And here we have uh, quantum animis errores in est, parat in scia rerum, in felix epulas hostibus illa subis. Uh, so, um, how great an error is in her heart, talking about Lucretia. She, not knowing what's going on, unknowing of what, unknowing of the things that, that her enemy had planned, unknowing of things, she, the unlucky girl, prepares dinner for her enemy. The new feature here we have, inskia plus rerum, not knowing things. This uh, rerum is acting as the as an object of inskia. Inskia is one of those pi pi adjectives, not knowing, and it takes the um, genitive as its um, object. So not knowing things. The last new feature in this chapter is in line four oh eight. And Four oh eight. We have okay. We have. Uh, we'll start with fertur, fertu in exequias animi matrona virilis et secum lacrimas in vidiamque trahit. So the matron. This is Lucretia. The matron is borne off to her funeral. The matron of a manly courage. Animi virilis. This is a genitive of description. The matron of a manly courage is borne off to her funeral, and with her, she uh, carries along or drags along tears and uh, hatred. This is kind of a hatred for en for her enemies and hatred toward her enemies. So that is uh, those are the new features for chapter forty-five. Thank you for listening.